Chapter 3 Ah! The bee lay arrested his fall violently. It knocked the wind out of him hard and hurt worse than last time. He flailed and grasped at the mountain for mercy. Again, a voice casually said overhead. Uh, uh, again, he stammered as he dangled 2,500 feet in the air. Not okay. Oh, oh, okay. Believe it. Something wasn't right. Not that he knew anything about it. I b- believe, he conceded and reached for the friendliest rock on that convexly protruding section of the mountain. Again. He stretched with all his might, and finally grasped it. His muscles burned. The sweat was stinging his eyes. His spent fingers resumed twitching. I, 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 do it. Believe it. Nausea was setting in. Believe, and it'll be so. I, believe... Agony gnawed his every fibre. He tightened his grip on the rock, yanked himself flush against the mountain face, and shakily planted his tiptoes in a crevice. He curled himself slightly, took a deep breath, and thrusted himself upward, and grabbed another jagged edge. He tried to climb past the convex hump again. Ah! The line arrested his fall so violently that his spine crackled. He couldn't breathe while dangling over what felt like the edge of the earth. N- need to go back down, he gasped, trying to catch his breath. Again. Dad, there's more to life than just books and theory. Believe it, Kaylin. Breath was still evading him. How was he going to get out of this alive? Don't be soft. You gotta do. You gotta be strong. That's what being a man's all about. Kaylin could only concede a weak nod. Mean it. Oh, okay. Believe it. I believe. Now do it. Stephen coolly watched Kaylin from high above. Climbing lead. Kaylin avoided looking up at him, torn between the fear of dying and disappointing his father. But Kaylin was already a stuttering, weakling of a disappointment. Nothing would ever change that. Kaylin extended his arms and body as far as he could while hanging from the line and began it all over again. That's it. Nice and calm. Say it, Stephen mentored. Calm. Again. Calm. Again. Calm. Same result. Ah! The line arrested his fall more violently than ever. Kaylin puked. Above, Stephen stared up at the summit. Uh huh. Kaylin descended the mountain of failure again, unable to even reach the snow line that time. He kept his eyes fixed on the ground. Stephen flung the rest of his gear and rifle onto his back. Kaylin held his breath as Stephen embarked back down the toe of the mountain and into the bush. Kaylin did the same. Summit's not going anywhere. We'll bag it next time. Kaylin sighed with dread. Next time. He moped along, lagging further and further behind. He couldn't see his father up ahead anymore. It was easy to lose someone in the bush. Maybe it was a good thing. Maybe that's what Dad wanted to lose his loser son, all pathetic, eighteen stammering years of him. Maybe the mountain had been the last straw. Dad never treated him like a loser, only pushed him to be strong. But Kaylin wasn't. He knew it. Everyone did. Dad's denial couldn't go on forever. Kaylin had to make things right before Dad gave up on him and began to see him the way everyone else did like some chicken-shit loser. A twig snapped behind him. Kaylin flinched and spun around, glimpsing someone step behind a tree. Return the way you came, a female voice warned. Kaylin was petrified with fright. The beasts want blood. Kaylin was no closer to finding the words to respond. Damiana cautiously stepped out into the open, 
enshrouded head to toe in her hooded crimson cloak. He glimpsed her bare feet as she neared, even more at a loss by it all. She seemed just as bewildered by his silence. They will kill you. Kaylin was too busy discerning her nude body through the slight opening in her cloak. Damiana's gaze went from curious to pensive to calculating. She drew closer and closer and closer. Kaylin's eyes widened as the red-cloaked spectrus, with an Italian accent, leaned in and gently licked his lips. Save me, she hauntingly whispered. He noticed ghastly bites on her body. He screamed, causing her to instinctually scratch his face as both fell back in horror of one another. They fled in opposite directions. Kaylin sprinted after his father, tripping over himself again and again until pathetically hitting the ground face first, not far from the toe of his father's boot. I saw something. No excuse for not staying calm, ever. Dad looked so appalled. He seemed not to want to even look at him. He merely glared straight ahead. Kaylin stared at the ground. Again, he had failed. Say it. It was how Dad worked with him on his speech impediment. I, 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 I'm calm. Again, nice and calm. Believe it. I, I, I'm calm. Again. I'm calm. He finally got out without a stutter. The silence was tense. I know I've struggled to show it, but I love you, son. Kaylin looked up at his father mouth agape, not used to hearing niceties from him. He sensed something very wrong. Stephen was clutching his rifle, readying to use it. Close your eyes, Stephen ordered as he unclicked the safety. Be calm. Kaylin gasped. Had Dad finally lost it? Was he going to finally off his loser son, put him down like some lame animal? Like those tales about Dad's temper when he was younger, how he almost killed some guy for spilling his beer or something. I, I, I'm going to be tougher, I swear, Kaylin pleaded. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I'll turn it around. It's all my fault, the way things turned out. My failures as a man. I'm volunteering at, at the clinic and the chapel. I took you in after your mama passed, not because I had to. I'm devoting m m my life to helping others. But because I finally stopped running from my obligations. I swear! My obligations as a man, as a father, who walked out on you and your mother. D -d Dad! I pushed you hard, because didn't want you to wind up a coward. Kaylin sobbed for his life. A coward like me, son, who stopped believing and panicked in the face of doing what was right. I swear! Always stay calm, now more than ever. Believe it. W w why are you saying all this? Because the nearest climbable tree is 50 feet away, behind me. Calmly walk to it. Climb it. Now, walk. Kaylin finally realized that Stephen wasn't aiming the rifle at him, but instead passed him at a massive, charging grizzly. Stephen fired off one, two, three shots. Kaylin's ears rung as the monstrous bear crashed down to the ground, inches from him, dead. He stared at its enormous head in shock. What? Walk! Kaylin was jolted by his father's words and jumped to his feet. He finally saw what his father had known all along. Beyond the surrounding brush... There were massive, anomalous grizzlies, each foaming at the mouth with fury. Kaylin ran for the tree in panic. No, walk! Two bears charged after him. Stephen took aim. Kaylin cowered as the first bear closed in on him, but was struck by three rifle blasts and fell at Kaylin's feet, thrashing around. The other bear pounced on Kaylin. Before it could maul him, that bear too was shot once, twice, and finally a third time. It keeled over on top of Kaylin. 
Kalin crawled out from beneath the dying bear and resumed his hysterical sprint toward the tree. Stephen again reloaded and readied to defend himself against the bears, moving in on him as... Kalin reached the tree and began climbing. He lost his shaky footing and fell. A bear pounced on him and began mauling him. Kalin was sprayed with warm blood as it also was struck by three rifle blasts. Two bears pounced on Stephen before he could shoot them. He skillfully fought them off using his ice axe and broke free. But the biggest, most horrific bear, the beast with the disfigured snout and the diagonal claw scar across its face, stood on its hind legs behind Stephen, towering eleven feet. Kaelin screamed as the scar-faced bear crashed down on Stephen and tore into the back of his head. It then thrashed him around like a rag doll. With stunning speed, Damiana ran up and smacked the bear on the head. Release him, wicked beast! The bears grew more enraged at the sight of her. The fur on their backs raised. They charged after her. She fled with the bears in hot pursuit. Kalin stumbled to his gravely injured dad and knelt beside him. Dad, you're okay. I'm s- sorry, sorry I couldn't climb the tree. You did fine. Sorry I c- couldn't help. Kalin sobbed. Stephen's scalp was torn off. He grabbed Kalin's hand. The pool of blood beneath them grew bigger and bigger. I'm sorry, Dad. Never mind. Just believe. Always believe. And... Stephen convulsed and slipped away.